Funding for Reading Rainbow is provided by Country Inns and Suites, where you can borrow a book at our Read It and Return Lending Library and return it on your next stay. Country Inns and Suites by Carlson, committed to literacy. And by a ready-to-learn television cooperative agreement from the U.S. Department of Education through the Public Broadcasting Service. The Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. Butterfly in the sky I can go twice as high Take a look It's in a book Have you ever seen one of these? Probably not. They're shackles. 400 years ago, millions of African men and women were kidnapped and forced to wear these. Then they were crammed into the bellies of cargo ships, like this one. It was a cruel and horrible journey. People were packed end to end, top to bottom. This old drawing of a slave ship shows there was no room to move or breathe. Every inch of space was packed with human beings. For months, there was no fresh air, no sunshine. Being in this place, I can almost hear the voices of my kidnapped ancestors. It's so dark down here. Hard to breathe. Some of us are sick. Some are dead. I miss my family and my village. My home is gone forever. Once this boat stops, I don't know where I'll be or where I'll be going. The slave ships landed here in America, and African people who were once free were sold as property to the highest bidder. Let the auction begin. First, we sell one prime male. What do I hear? $500. 700 I have 900 And 1000 Sold to the man in the green waistcoat. One of the worst things about slavery is that families were separated. Fathers, mothers, and children were oftentimes sold to different people. Here we have a healthy baby. Into the future, gentlemen. What am I offering? It's been many years since they took my boy from me. It seems like yesterday. These men come to look on us, poking and prodding like we was meat. I begged and I pleaded, please don't take my child. But they pay no mind to my tears. And my boy, he look at me. And I said, be good, child. Be good for your mama.
Being a slave meant you had no freedom to live as you wanted. You were owned by another person and forced to do the hardest, dirtiest work. We go to them fields from sun up to sundown. Tired and thirsty, Sunday your one day arrest. Even then, you at the master's calling. In spite of the hardships, enslaved Africans built new families, new communities. Traditions were kept alive. Children learned the stories, games, and dances of their people. And always, there was the music. Music was the language of their greatest joys and deepest sorrows. Somebody's praying, Lord, come by here. Somebody's praying, Lord, come by here. Oh, Lord, come by here. Somebody needs you, Lord, come by here. Many bore the burden of slavery. They survived and built their lives on the hope that someday their children would be free. But for others, the hope of someday being free was not enough. I need to be free. They say up north, we can be free. How can I escape? The best way to escape was under cover of darkness. But how could they find their way north at night? They followed the drinking gourd. This is a drinking gourd. Here's a bowl for water and a handle for dipping. It looks just like That group of stars in the sky. Those stars were called the drinking gourd because it looked just like their water dippers. You can see the bowl and the handle. And there are the two special stars that help point the way north. Escaping slaves sang a song about those stars that led them to freedom. A song called Follow the Drinking Gourd. When the sun comes back and the first quail calls, follow the drinking gourd. For the old man is awaiting for to carry you to freedom. Follow the drinking gourd. Story and Pictures by Jeanette Winter. Read by Keith David. Long ago, before the Civil War, there was an old sailor called Peg Leg Joe who did what he could to help free the slaves. Joe had a plan. He'd use hammer and nail and saw and work for the master, the man who owned the slaves on the cotton plantation. At night, when work was done, he'd teach the slaves a song that secretly told the way to freedom. Just follow the drinking gourd, it said. When the song was learned and sung all day, Peg Leg Joe would slip away to work for another master and teach the song again. One day, a slave called Molly saw her man James sold to another master. James would be taken away, their family torn apart, just one more night together. A quail called in the trees that night. Molly and James remembered Joe's song. When the sun comes back and the first quail calls, follow the drinking gourd. For the old man is awaiting for to carry you to freedom. Follow the drinking gourd. They looked to the sky and saw the stars. 
taking their little son, Isaiah, old Hattie, and her grandson, George. Molly and James set out for freedom that very night. They ran all night through the fields till they crossed the stream to the woods. When daylight came, they hid in the trees, watching, listening for the master's hounds set loose to find them. But the dogs lost the runaway scent at the stream, and they were not found. They hid all day in the woods. At night, they walked again, singing Joe's song and looking for the signs that marked the trail. The river bank makes a very good road. The dead trees will show you the way. Left foot, peg foot, traveling on. Follow the drinking gourd. Walking by night, sleeping by day, for weeks they traveled on. They never knew what lay ahead. Sometimes empty bellies to sleep on. Sometimes no stars to guide the way. There was danger from men who would send them back and danger from hungry beasts. But sometimes a kind deed was done. One day, a boy brought bacon and cornbread to share. Singing low, they traveled on. The river ends between two hills. Follow the drinking gourd. There's another river on the other side. Follow the drinking gourd. When the great big river meets the little river, follow the drinking gourd. For the old man is a-waitin' for to carry you to freedom if you follow the drinking gourd. They climbed the last hill. Down below was Peg Leg Joe, waiting at the wide Ohio River to carry them across. Under a starry sky, Joe rode them across the river. He told them of hiding places where they would be safe. A path of houses stretched like a train on a secret track leading north to Canada. He called it the Underground Railroad. It carried riders to freedom. The first safe house stood on a hill. The lamp was lit, which meant it was safe to come. The door opened wide to welcome the freedom travelers. Then they were rushed to the barn, for the farmers knew there would be slave catchers near. Peg Leg Joe went back to the river to meet others who were following the drinking gourd. The farmer sent the travelers to the next safe house. Here, they were led to a secret room hidden behind shelves. They rested and healed their wounds. Soft beds, full meals, and hot baths washed away some fear and pain. When they were strong, they traveled again from house to house to house on the underground trail, still following the drinking gourd north. At last, they came to the shores of Lake Erie. Molly and James and Isaiah, old Hattie and young George, climbed aboard the steamship that would carry them across to Canada, to freedom. Five more souls are safe, old Hattie cried. They had followed the drinking gourd. Songs like Follow the Drinking Gourd led the way north for many slaves. But music did more for African Americans than lead us to freedom. It expressed joys and sorrows, lifted our spirits, and gave us hope. This is Sweet Honey in the Rock. Freedom, 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 freedom
Today, this group of African-American women sings to keep alive the songs of slavery and the spirit of freedom. When we African people were brought here as slaves, we brought the tradition of singing as a part of everyday life and making music with us. Music is something that they can't take away from you. You have your voice, you have your feelings. And quite frankly, I don't think we would be here if, there, if it wasn't for the music, for the songs, to be able to express how we were feeling. And if you think about songs that make you feel good, when you feel terrible, when you think, oh, I feel, I can't feel any worse today, and then a song comes to you that makes you feel better when you sing it, that's exactly what slaves did. When you're sad, sometimes you sing a song, you could be singing a sad song, and then you feel, be you feel better, and it gives you the, the strength to move through whatever it is that you're going through. Music is very important in life. Gilead is a spiritual. Balm, B-A-L-M, is a soothing ointment. And it's a song that talks about a place where there is hope, there's soothing, and there's healing. And then the Holy Spirit that you will hear over and over again in songs created during slavery is that you must go on. No matter what you face, you go on. And if you find that you are being controlled or enslaved by someone else, you're not free to speak openly. You can't tell them exactly what you want them, what you want to say. And so you have to find other ways to do it. A code song is a song that is familiar to the slaves on the plantation. It's a song that contains a secret message to let everybody who's familiar with the song know that tonight is the night. It's time to keep your ear out for the next message so we can escape to freedom. The song says, run, Mona, run. In this song, the mourner stands for a person in slavery. To tell that person to run is to say, try to get away. So run, Mona, run is a way the community is saying, go ahead, get away and escape. Got to 
Freedom means being able to go where you want to go, to dress like you want to dress, to be with whomever you want to be with, to live where you want to live without anybody stopping you or telling you what you are allowed to do. Freedom is your birthright. It's not anything that anybody can take away from you. You're born with it. They can, people can put you in here or try to stop you from going there, but as long as you know who you are inside yourself, then you are free. You're free. You should never let anybody tell you that you're not. Slavery ended over a hundred years ago, but people still sing songs and tell stories about being free. Here are three books that celebrate freedom. Hello, my name is T. Eric Cunningham. Here is a very joyful book for of wonderful songs from black history. Its name is Shake to the One That You Love the Best. You'll be so surprised at how many songs you recognize. There are short explanations for all of the songs. You'll find them on the sides of the pages. Some of the songs are from slavery times. Shortening bread is one of them. I'm sure you've heard it. Mama's little baby loves shortening, shortening. Mama's little baby loves shortening bread. I'd like to sing you one more song from the book. Miss Mary, ma, 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 all dressed in black, 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 with silver buttons, 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 all down her back, back, back. Now you can see why you should sing along with Shake it to the one that you love the best. Hi, I'm Elena. Many, many years ago in this country, African Americans were forced to be slaves. But some of them wanted freedom so badly that they risked their lives to escape. This is the true story of a young girl who did just that. Sweet Clara and the Freedom Quilt. Sweet Clara was a slave from the day she was born. She was taken from her mother when she was very young. Clara worked in the fields and it was really, really hard. So Clara's aunt taught her how to sew. In the big house, Clara heard stories about daring escapes to freedom. So Clara made her secret quilt. It helped her remember the stories she had heard. She used bits of cloth to show lakes, rivers, and houses. The quilt was her map to freedom. I felt very touched when I read this book because Sweet Clara was so determined to be free. And I'm so glad that freedom belongs to all of us now. Hi, I'm Matthew. I just read a true story called A Picture Book of Harriet Tubman. She was a great leader who led her people to freedom. Harriet Tubman was born as a slave on a plantation. Her life was very hard. Harriet decided to run away. It was a dangerous trip, but she was very brave. People who didn't believe in slavery told her where to go. She made it all the way to the north and freedom. And she didn't stop there. She helped 300 people escape from slavery. Harriet Tubman had many accomplishments in her life. She was one great lady. If you want to read more, check out this book. Slavery is painful to remember. 
But in one of the most difficult times in our nation's history, brave people, both black and white, risked their lives to end something because it was wrong. And from that terrible time came an important part of the legacy of African-American culture. Courageous heroes, inspiring songs, and unforgettable stories that all Americans can share. I'll see you next time. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know. Yes, everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know. Well, everybody ought to know. What freedom means. What freedom means. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know. Yes, everybody ought to know. What justice is. What justice is. Today's Reading Rainbow books are Follow the Drinking Gourd, Stories and Pictures by Jeanette Winter, published by Alfred A. Knopf. Shake it to the one that you love the best. Play songs and lullabies from black musical traditions. Collected and adapted by Cheryl Warren Maddox, with illustrations from the works of Barnett P. Honeywood and Brenda Joysmith. Published by Warren Maddox Productions, distributed by JTG of Nashville. Sweet Clara and the Freedom Quilt by Deborah Hopkinson. Paintings by James Ransom, published by Alfred A. Knopf. A picture book of Harriet Tubman by David A. Adler. Illustrated by Samuel Byrd, published by Holiday House. Funding for Reading Rainbow is provided by Country Inns and Suites by Carlson, offering a family-friendly atmosphere and the Read It and Return Lending Library or you can borrow a book and return it on your next day. And by a ready-to-learn television cooperative agreement from the U.S. Department of Education through the Public Broadcasting Service. The Corporation for Public Broadcasting. And by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you.